Hey, I'm Nate. This is my channel, and I do car stuff. Hey, what's up, friends and other car people? This is the third and last video of a interior update slash car stereo install project I took on. The first video I made a switch panel. The second video I took apart and vinyl wrapped my VIP tray, which didn't work out so well because I used the wrong kind of vinyl, which I show all that in the other video. I'll put links to the other two videos in the description. But this video is for the stereo, what I like to call the minimalist stereo install. It's just a hidden Bluetooth amplifier uh, and then a little controller. So no more big stereo. And let's get into it. So now I'm going to get the wiring done for the stereo. This is the harness that came with the stereo. And then this is an aftermarket adapter that plugs straight into the factory plug. I was gonna cut this down when I thought that the amp was gonna go behind the VIP tray, but it doesn't fit behind the VIP tray and the only place I can figure that it's gonna go is in the glove box, which is kind of a bummer. I'm gonna leave them full length. They might be a little bit long, but there should be plenty of room behind the delete plate where that big honking stereo used to be. <laughs> to stuff any extra length of wire. I don't want to cut them too short and then not have enough because that's a lot harder to remedy. I'll probably throw some wire loom on it to make it look nice and just keep everything together. Um, if you ever install an aftermarket stereo, get one of these. The, they're vehicle specific and then basically all you do is take your aftermarket stereo harness and then this that you get and you match the colors up. You don't have to solder it. You can use the little red crimp splices, but you just connect them together and then this will plug straight into your factory harness. You don't ever need to cut off the factory plug, figure what wires go to what, just match colors, plug it in, good to go. So I got all the wires soldered together. For the most part, like I said, I just went color to color, purple wire to purple wire, green wire to green wire, so forth and so on, soldered them all together. Uh, the only difference that I did is amplifier harness has a blue and white wire. The instructions don't say exactly what it is, but I'm pretty sure that is the remote wire to tell the amp to turn on. You can use this amp in a lot of different setups. You can use it with factory decks and aftermarket decks. And if you're using it with an aftermarket deck, you would use the aftermarket decks blue wire to this blue and white wire to tell the amp to turn on. There's no red wire, which is usually an ignition switch wire. I wired the blue and white wire from the amplifier to tell it to turn on to the ignition switch wire of the factory harness. So in theory, Red wire gets power when you turn the ignition on, which normally turns your radio on. That'll send it through the remote wire telling this aftermarket amp to turn on. Yeah. So now I'm going to make a wiring harness that goes through the center console to the new switch panel. I used a piece of like zero gauge wire, I think it was. I don't know. I just had it laying around. It's basically cable that you'd use for powering an amplifier. So I took a piece of that that I had and it goes from the battery in the trunk up to a fuse block that sits behind the passenger seat underneath the carpet. So that way any accessories that I want to add are basically just add a fuse, tie into the fuse block, and then run it to a switch and then to the accessory. I'll put the wiring diagram for you here. <laughs> I made up a wiring diagram, planned out which colors would go to what, so that way I can have a plan, stick to it, and won't get confused later. I don't know entirely what I'm doing, but I'm hoping for the best. This 
is the harness that comes from the power to the switches. And then this is one from the switches that has to go back through the center console for the puddle light and the air ride controller. Added another connector to this. Same idea as this one, so that way if I lift out the center console, I can just undo two connectors and the whole center console can come out without having to unhook wires individually. This is the wiring harness all said and done. This is the end that'll plug into the fuse block. Those two plugs will sit right there. That's where if the car had factory power windows, the switch goes right there. There's a nice little empty area back behind uh, and then the harness comes down to where it plugs into the switches. I don't know what these yellow wires are for on the switch pigtails. Both diagrams of how to wire the switches, they don't give any explanation for what that pin does. So hopefully I don't need them. These plug into the switches. That is the ground. I uh, put a disconnect on the ground so I can unplug it easier if I have to because the the screw that it grounds out on is back there a ways. And then this plug will connect the light bar in the front grill. And then whenever I add interior lights, one of those wires is positive and one is the ground for the interior lights. And the ground goes back through and gets grounded out with the rest of the harness. So whenever I add interior lights, I can just wire up the power on the ground and be good to go. I don't have to find another ground. Okay, so one thing I definitely did not think of is the switches all have the same colors of wire, obviously, because they're all just the same switch. So I colored the wires based on what they go to, but all those colors are inside the loom that I can't see. So I had to hook up the switches and I wanted, I wanted them to be in a certain order, but I didn't know which one did which, so I basically just had to turn them on and figure out what went to what and then rearrange them. So I got that all done. So that's what we got so far. It's looking pretty good. Well, I got the amp all installed. The wires are kind of a pain. Um, this is like a splash shield for the controller. And that was just totally in the way. And I'm not worried about it getting wet, so I just pulled it down. Um, but the wires kind of get in the way of the glove box closing smoothly. So I might have to notch the back of the glove box or something. Um, to make some more room so they pass through a little bit easier. However they are right now, they're working pretty smooth though, so now it's a moment of truth of whether I hooked up all the wires right and we have power. And if the car starts. And if the belt squeals. Oh! Oh! Lights! Lights means power! It's doing stuff. The switch plate, I'm totally stoked on. It looks good. Ignore this. This was, I cut this up from the last switch panel that sat in the ashtray. So that's why that's all janky. Probably will try and find a new center console eventually. My, my wiring harness that I added for the switches it goes through a factory wire pass through that's in the dash structure. There's a like a little cut in the plastic that a factory wire harness passes through. Mine goes through that same one up this side right here. You can see it right here. And then around and then the two connectors sit behind this. Then it goes down along here and then goes up and around right here and back down to the fuse block. Uh, the reason why I went that route is because this hinge part swings back down in there and it is a huge pain to maneuver wires around All right, it. so here's the switch panel all installed with the radio controller and the four switches. So I got my air ride, puddle lights, light bar in the front grill, which I need to replace because it turns out to be pretty janky. And then this will be interior lights in the future. But for now, that doesn't link to anything. All right, so I'm gonna try to record this and give you an idea of how fast it pairs. Hopefully YouTube won't get mad. This is the same song that I got from Epidemic Sound, only I'm just using it on Spotify through my phone. So it's the same song in the video. So don't get pissed, YouTube. Let's 
See? A couple of seconds and it was playing. Alright, so in conclusion on the stereo and the switch panel install, I'm super stoked on everything. Starting with the switches, I love the way that they feel. They have a very tactile click when you engage them and disengage them. They're very accessible being right there where that giant stereo used to be. The indicator LEDs to me are just perfect. Enough to let you know that something's on but not so bright that it sucks to drive with. Then as far as the stereo goes, I love the simplicity of it. I love that it pairs right away. I mean it's like 5 to 10 seconds of turning the car on. Music is playing through it. The sound quality is decent. It's nothing super crazy. Um, obviously it's not going to be as good as having a full deck with EQ controls and everything. There's no EQ controls on it. All there is is a fader from front to rear. My car has the headrest speakers on it, which are not very good quality, so I may have to play with the fade, and then eventually I might do something like high quality speakers uh, in the front. There's a switch to run it bridged where you get twice as much power to a pair of speakers. So maybe like one pair of really good speakers with extra power going to them is the way to go. I'm not sure, I don't know tons about that. If you have ideas on that side, Please comment and give me what you know, that I would greatly appreciate it. There is a full video on all the parts that I used for the switches, the stereo, even the vinyl wrap and the tools I used on the vinyl for the VIP tray and the vinyl that's on the switch plate and the switch plate. And I'm going to try to make sure I have links for all that stuff in the description below. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you like the idea of minimalist car stereos and cool switch panels, then whack that thumbs up button. That's right. This is what I love and I've been doing it for quite a while now, but I just recently started trying to film things while I create things. And so I'm kind of figuring it out as I go, but I just want to help encourage people to try and make stuff and step outside the box and just do different things. So if you like that sort of thing, Hit the like button, subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. See you later. Put the place up.